Capitalism. Commercialism. Capitalism is my favorite sport. I like where you dribble up and down the court. That ain't it. That ain't it. <laughs> All right, boom. So let's turn this down. Was that? I don't know. It's definitely the game we playing though. All right, so got it. Boom. boom. All right, so I put the YouTube link in the uh, chat, brothers. So while we getting squared away with that, I'm gonna put that. Marcus Pacer on Facebook, so I can uh, copy yours. I just did. Cause I'm on my phone. Oh, we getting live straight. Hold on, let me start. <laughs> Okay. You say you did the more? Okay, let me find it. Hear that? All right, boom. Uh, uh, uh. Man, you know what? What domination is, bro? Yeah, domination. We were wearing black and they had the whips and stuff. Oh, that's dominatrix. All right, so I feel I like stream, right? I feel like domination. Can y'all is... see me? Yo, you? I can't see myself. We can see you. Okay, well that's cool. I feel like I, I, I can see, bro. You I was just make sure my screen black, but okay, let's go. What's wrong with your screen, bro? Yeah. You gotta get you gotta get an iPhone. Fight, fight. I, I I got an iPhone. <laughs> oh, my bad. Well, I was trying to plug Apple real quick for the one time, but Apple, you gotta do better. No, I'm and, uh, I think it was just because I went to post it on Facebook. Whatever, we good. Nah, I was just gonna say, uh, domination was was Wayne when he was on, bro. It was a nation of domination. Wow, it's crazy. Wow. That is also a true statement, but your Wayne was Wayne is a very good example of domination. Bro. His room was crazy. Like, what was that? A good eight years of straight, just nobody really touching him. Not even close. Michael Jordan, Tom um, Brady. Yeah, Michael Jordan. We saw Michael Jordan get beat on a little bit, though. But when he was dominating, he was dominant. Only yeah, he, two, only two years they lost is when he wasn't on the team. That's a fact. Well, what are you supposed to call it? That's a good question. Like I always think about that. Like when you're Michael Jordan, when you're Tom Brady, when are you supposed to be like, all right, I can walk out on top? When you want or to. are you supposed to stay until the young kids start beating up on the old man? Yeah, because you ain't. It's not gonna be a reality till you can't. Till you can't win. And technically, if that was the case with Tom Brady, he should he should have left the year he won with the Buccaneers. Like I ain't got nothing else to prove, but he can't stop because he can still do it. You can yeah. if you can still beat him. Then it's just like you playing with younger kids or playing with your little brother or whatever. Until until you can't do it anymore, then reality is not gonna set in. You still got it. In your That's mind, true. you always still got it. That's true. That's true. I just often wonder, like, especially with football, you don't want it to be a Kurt Warner type reality check where you get it knocked out of you and go retire. That's uh, all I was laughing about. That's, that's the, that's the that's reality. Brady, <laughs> that's the, that's the reality check. Brady would, would end up taking a shot like that. I don't, I wouldn't see that for him. Nah, he's so, falling before he gets there. Oh, yeah, but uh, he'll, he'll be out there looking like Peyton Manning with a noodle on. There you go. <laughs> There you go. But, uh, get a start, Gary. Get a start. <laughs> get a start. We 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 here though, but we, we talk about greatness, man. And, and you know what I'm saying? We we are creating that here. Be a light podcast, mission statement, the number one mentorship for mindset development, career essential education, leadership cultivation. I mean, be real about it, y'all. Where are y'all getting this type of information week after week from both young, strong, personable? He said, oh. <laughs> Wise 
black men. Where y'all getting this information from? Y'all show me where, and I'll go there, but I ain't seen it yet. That's why we created it. Uh, our DNA is authentic, positive, and we respect all sex, race, religion, political views, and preference. We for our people, and we may like to have a great sense of humor. Uh, we like to, you know, have fun with this. It's uh, this is for y'all, man. Um, man, oh man, man, I, I see what you put it there, Mr. Lift and Go. But uh, yeah, welcome. <laughs> what, if they, what if they really show you? You really gonna leave us? What you mean? They show you us. If you show me where, I'll go there. I'll go watch I it. I'll go, I nah, nah, I'll go watch it. I'll go watch it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I at least want to see what it yeah. is. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, wait, like, wait <laughs> we just going to end it like that? Wait, 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 that's it? That's the end? Nah, bro. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm trying to go watch it, though. I'm trying to see that. We need a We need to be a light network. Mm. If we really being real. If y'all trying to be a light out here, let's create a network so we can all do that. Because, you know what I'm saying? You got, you know, you got the churches that's streaming. You know, you know what church is about. You know what I'm saying? Then you got, you know, the trash media. You know, it's just entertaining you. But then you don't got like the mix. You got the educational media. But we we having a good time. We just good energy. We need that. But um, man, welcome back to the Be Like Podcast. It's your boy K Sloan here with the homies. Jay John. Jay Jiggy. You got the brain. It's your boy Nate G. And then yeah. Mr. Lift can go. If you know, you know, I'm gonna say it before he just gonna stare. Yeah, he's gonna stare off in the space. We know how he get down. But uh, man, you know, we we back. We just had a, a beautiful Christmas. We are uh, we 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 had a uh, we had a good Christmas. Everybody, 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 straight. We came out alive. I'm alive. Yeah. It's one of we our alive. Topics. What'd you say? It's one of our topics. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, you you ain't gonna add it to it. You gonna add to it too much. We we could get on, we could get on this cap or no cap though. <laughs> What you what mm. you talking about? What we talking about? <laughs> you want me to put it out there? Okay, so on the internet lately, I've been seeing a lot of strong, you know, men in some some high positions or have a lot of capital to their name that you know trying to push the mm, polygamy idea as you know it should be more than one woman to every man. But I I challenge those men or even the people who had the idea. Does that work both ways? What if the woman has all the capital and the position and the power? Can she have more than one husband? You know, and she can take care of all of them? My good sir, can, do you mind if I jump in and uh, define polygamy for our audience? Go ahead. Uh, so what it says here is polygamy from the late Greek uh, polygamia, the oh. state of marriage, <laughs> the state of marriage to many spouses, the practice of marrying and uh, multiple spouses, when a man is a man is married to more than one wife at the same time, sociologists call this polygamy. So the definition even says of man. Uh, okay. but then when a hold up real quick though, but okay, okay. it was actually excuse me, polygamy, polygamy. When a woman is married to more than one husband at a time, it's called poly polyandry. Polyandry. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, So gotcha. you actually have a. <laughs> They don't even yeah. have a definition for the women. That's messed nah, they, up. They got, they got one for the women, too. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's a thing. I don't know where they do it. At. I haven't done my research on that. but I, I, I was about so to say said, something. I ain't going to say that. That's not right. You, know, I, okay, I, you I can't know. do that. Mm -hmm. You got to say it now. Nah, you can't do that. You got to say it now. Bro, it's a podcast, bro. We just... Don't say it. <laughs> them, brothers, say it. them two brothers married to the same woman. <laughs> what, what what old boy used to say on the... Uh, on the boondocks? <laughs> oh, man. He was. <laughs> he wildin'. Yeah, he wildin'. But no, I'll take it, though. I'll take it. I'll take it, though. But look, but look, but look, but look. So does polygamy go both ways? Work both ways, right? Uh, uh -huh. Right? That's your question? Yeah. I feel like... I feel like everything... Yeah, and that, was, that was posed to me by, by my wife, Miss Kayla. She's sleep, but... It was posed to me by us like, so if y'all can do it and we can't do it, why it don't work both ways? I'm pretty sure uh, a whole bunch of men are going to be married to Lil' Kim or somebody that got a bunch of money and they're going to be okay with it. So we just supposed to be okay with it. But even those guys, it's like, well, uh, they all my wives. Can they step out of their wives? They watch, you know, they stare at us and talk to another man because that's supposed to be the whole definition. I was like, yeah, it don't work like that. That's why I'm more, you know, one woman man. But yeah, I don't think it works like that. Who when mean, they do it, problem will not do it. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Pretty much. Pretty much. I feel like I feel like I heard the whole stance that any man that can handle two 
women, for, for starters, has to be a very at home individual. Uh, when you're talking about, you know, your mental uh, capabilities and your strength and your spiritual strength and all that, like to be able to really do that, I feel like you have to be very at one with yourself. You know what I'm saying? It sounds all cool in theory, but I mean, let's be real about it. Like that's, that's a equal, I, all right, I don't know. I, I don't know about me even being able to even fathom being in that situation, but um, I mean, it has to be cool both ways. It has to be. It's not. It's not a if and or but about it. It's. I mean, if if you can do it, then I can do it. Now, mm-hmm. does it work? Whole different <laughs> conversation. Whole different conversation. But if you can do it, then I can do it. Yes. One hundred yeah. to me. It yeah. definitely work both ways. But like you Will said, work? Uh, I think society <laughs> says. Society says like even like when we always. I mean, we dudes, but you see two women kissing on TV. That's normal. Oh, I ain't nothing wrong with that. You see two dudes, you know, it's almost like, oh, that's good. We got to turn this off because it's too mean. That ain't supposed to happen. So it's almost like society makes it wrong with the woman with two husbands. But it look cool to everybody with the man with two wives or multiple wives, more than two Some in some cases. I'm like you, kid. All that emotion in, 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 in one house, I'm good on it. I'm good that, on it. I'm, I'm getting my one. I'm cool with my one. And I'm yeah. cool. I'm good, you know, so. But I, I'm like you. It goes, it should go both ways. I just think society puts it. It's almost like a, y'all two live with her and how that work? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That, um, Nate, what you think? I know. Oh, they know oh, this thing. <laughs> it's, this is always funny to me, though, because words mean stuff, bro. It ain't, one is not going to work, but the only <laughs> one thing is not going to work for starters. A conversation, I feel like, in today's day and age, it's because we want to be whores. Like, dudes want to be cold, bro. Like, that's really what it is because the word says to be able to marry multiple women. Most, if we're looking at just the reality of what we see in the world, can't talk for most dudes, but it takes most dudes a good while to marry one woman. So are you really gonna be able to marry two women? I don't think it's gonna, it's not gonna work by definition. I understand what it is. I understand it. It's you want your cake and to be able to eat it too. It's also not gonna work because if you see it on the other side, bro, your pride real fragile. Your pride real, real fragile. Like it's not gonna work. I know I lose my mind. I no, no, sir. So what is it? What is she what is she Oprah or something? What is she Oprah? She got all, okay. she got all, the, all the opportunity. Okay. All the- but now what you're talking about is how does Oprah make this different? I don't understand. Because, <laughs> money. money. Because, yeah. oh, because I'm saying because I'm just there for the money. Oh, okay, okay. okay. If okay. Oprah told me, yeah, come sit at the house and look pretty and while statement in there doing whatever, I'm gonna be like I bet because it's Oprah's money, but we ain't talking about Oprah. Uh oh, uh oh. So it's cool. You do. I'm for sale. I'm for. So <laughs> while you guys oh, are listening to the Be Like podcast, I want you guys to know we don't want you to lose your mind trying to have multiple wives or multiple husbands. <laughs> we don't want you to totally sell yourselves all the way. We don't want to totally endorse that it message. Just we want you guys to make sure that you don't. Get over anxious and you take ashwagandha, guys. Make sure you guys are taking this herbal supplement because this Great is going boy. to help you guys. Yo, um, I'm, I'm to sorry, be able bro. to um, to be able to help yourself. Ooh, stay I'm at peace. Let, I'm not gonna let that. I'm not letting that slide. I, I, I don't want you doing. to. We're go. We're back to regular schedule program. Okay. Go ahead. We're, we're, yeah, we're okay. back. We're back. We're back. No, you're not. I don't know. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 Nate, 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 Nate. No. If Oprah came here and said you're gonna sit there, because Oprah at, at some point you're gonna have to earn your keep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hold on. You have to understand the rules of engagement. So I mean, hey, if you can't, if you're not gonna go through with it, I'm just saying. If Oprah said, I give you Oprah got bees. You got bees. I give you 25 mil a year. No. No, I don't like what it's no. Hey. We're not, okay, we're not gonna hey. do this in the park because no. this will go for a long time. Nate. Okay, Nate. no. Just to Nate. be husband number two to Oprah. No. 
Not for that. How? Because you, know, you, 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 you basically look gave it. You basically gave your manhood up. You said I'm no longer a man no more because. Because now I'm a $25 million a year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> man. Man. Uh, and, uh, I can't do it, brother. Yeah. I'm not. But see, in this situation, I'm not talking about you, like, being a husband. You're going to be a husband. She paying you 25 M's to do what she needs you to do. She paying you just sounds bad. It just sounds bad now. She she keeping you your too. quality of life good. Like, we ain't going to say paying you. She's keeping your quality of life awesome to be a husband. In the same house with the other man. Same house. He your daddy. He your all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Nate, scratch it, scratch it. We're going to switch this up. We're going to switch it up. He ain't your daddy at that point? Throw, throw you Oprah know, you... Where's Beyonce? <laughs> Beyonce and Jay-Z. Because now, now you were, now it's Beyonce. Let's change the version. Because I can see how you can say, uh, I'll sit there and be pretty. But now it's Beyonce and another man. We're going to scratch Jay-Z. Beyonce, you done married two. Nate just not doing that. Nate's not. $60, I'm not why y'all entertaining Nate? Like, Nate's not doing that. Nate is not doing that. But she paid he just said, he just He started this with your pride is too fragile. He started the whole thing talking about our pride is too fragile. That's but he, y'all said, he ain't oh, doing no, that, no, man. No disrespect, no disrespect to Oprah. But y'all said, oh, just make, it, make it real. And Beyonce, it's real. Now, you know what I'm saying? It's somebody you going to track. It's not really it's, though. Well, <laughs> somebody yeah, is right. real. Yeah, I'm missing the key point here. It's about to be 25 <laughs> in. Oh my god, <laughs> you're you missing the point. Next, but, but, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get too far, Nate, like when when we use it in the man sense, you know, a, a lot. I I heard Akon say that you know he can he can afford multiple wives, right? So he can f- afford the livelihood to house and take care of multiple wives. So if you flip that and you say a woman, that's why I use Oprah. You say a woman that has the money to house and 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 deal with multiple husbands. But y'all all work as a family. Y'all take care of the kids together, groceries together, whatever. That's what we talking about. Yeah, and that's why I really want to work because you're just not. Look at the, the difference in what you even ask them to do is to do. You want dudes to really work together and do that. And I'm not saying it's like totally impossible, but chances are, no, not going to work because of the Akon answer. If Akon is saying, yes, I can financially provide for all of those. And that's cool, right? Not knocking that part, but you can't really be there to be a husband to 10 wives. Like you can't do it, bro. You don't have that much time. You don't have that kind of mental capacity, that kind of emotional capacity. So I I, and. How everybody talk about like with Nick Cannon and all his kids. Well, you have a whole army. Like, so how can you actually raise that many kids? That's exactly yeah, that's, your family, that's a, a day by day thing. That's not a oh well, I'm here Monday for three hours and I gotta go to this one. You got yes. 12 kids, bro. Like you can't do it. So yeah, no, that's on a serious saying. note, it's not gonna work. Yeah. On a right on a Nate check. note. On a Nate note, you know, hey, I'm just trying to get a sponsor, man. No, you're not. We could be on the own network, man. You're right, though, it. bro. you right. You really are right about the, the Nick Cannon thing, though. I'm glad you said that because that's something that I think you know people don't be understanding when they be out here just making all these kids. It's like yeah, you got all these kids out here. It's like, okay, like you trying your best to get them all that money and XYZ, but they need your, they yep. need daddy there. Yep. They need mom. There. He mentioned that the other day. He said he he spread He's, thin. Everybody getting the pieces of them. Nobody getting the whole the yeah, whole day. They, they're not gonna I mean, if you have 10 kids in the same house, that's still a lot. But you know what I'm saying? At least you can pull up. Yeah. You have to create, but you got to go. Yeah, but you can deal with all 10 of them at the same time. You yeah. got to go to seven different baby mama's house. For Christmas, he can't even really. They're not all in the same city. Unless he's bringing them to him. And then they still not getting all of him. They're getting pieces of him because he got to go. And you got to gotta think the, the I hate to say the original two, the first two are totally disenfranchised from the rest of, of their brothers and sisters because of who their mom is. They're like, I don't need this money. Right. I don't need yeah. none of that. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. It kind of sucks. Me, me personally, I, I, I really take the dad role seriously and I, to impute knowledge, to be there, to tease, to correct chest all that. Like, I, I really think 
the majority of them kids. So yeah, they're gonna be Nick Cannon kids, but it's I think they're gonna get cheated from what they could have really benefited from. So Bro. obviously he has, he has a creative mind, you know what I'm saying? He's 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 very business savvy and all that. Somebody, somebody not gonna get everything. Yeah. And it, and it, and it, 10, it, 19, like somebody not gonna get it. Yeah, you know, that's saying that saying we be bringing up, you know, what I'm saying uh, uh, a home with no borders is always under attack, or or a city with no walls under always under attack. And I feel like you know fathers tend to create those walls, like that tends to be what we the strongest at. And then you got all these little cities essentially because these different mothers they trying to hold down that little city, and then you supposed to be creating the borders, but you know what I'm saying you're not there. And, and and daddies, we gotta fight for that. Like we really have to fight to create those borders. So you, you know, you creating walls over here, you creating walls over here, bro. You, you, there's no way. There's no way you got the energy to do all that, man. You're gonna run yourself thin if you're trying to be a good dad. You know what I'm saying? If you really trying to always come back. This is why I tell y'all to stop being bums and raise your kids. Because it's real. <laughs> and it doesn't even mean being a broke hey. bum. You're you're being a bummy dad. But I'm being if you got the paper, that's wonderful. Bro, if everybody eating, cool. That's big goal number one. But that's like baseline responsibility when you're a parent, too, is feed your kids. So if you chose to feed 30 kids, that's on you, bro. But you got to be there to actually raise your kids, to be there and, like, care for your kids and develop your kids. So if you ain't able to do that, you really be in the boom. And you're choosing to be a boom because you're choosing to spread yourself thin because you can't work on your dismount. Practice gymnastics. And counter, counter counter argument to you though. Counter argument to you because we do we do say this a lot in the podcast, but I think the counter argument to that is let the other parent be a parent too. Because everybody don't don't have the same amount of uh drive and fortitude. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not built to fight through adversity. The at the end of the day, I seen something the other day, somebody put uh, a condom on somebody's car said you park terribly don't recreate that's what they put on their car and the reason why the reason why i'm bringing this up <laughs> but the reason why i'm bringing this up is because even though i'm not saying that i am saying that everybody is not built to be parents everybody's not ready to be parents and if you have created a child with somebody that has shown you qualities of, you know, a person that you may not want to see your child being, maybe you need to uplift that person. So they, because at the end of the day, this bum or this person that is running away or this fearful person is still going to be your child's parent. They're going to still be your child's mama. They're still going to be your child's daddy. And you alienating them because of the, the who they are shows who you are. You feel me? So I you think really that alienating need- them because of the mistakes that you made. Which, which is, it, it all comes back to self. Again, now, now we back to the same conversation. So, you know, I think I think that's big. We need to add that to that too. But, um, wow. You stay working on your dismount. <laughs> dismount? You ain't hear next? That's okay. Next subject. Yeah, uh, I heard it. Yeah. Uh, cool. Man. <laughs> it's cool. Take to it. All right. So, uh, <laughs> get into it, man. How are we, how are we uh, dealing with, you know, the mundane day-to-day uh, pieces of life? You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys are all guys that are, you know, consistent. You guys have homes. You guys have families. You guys are leaders. Um, and, and to be a leader, you have to have an ability to be able to stay the boat. And when things ain't really rocking like that, you still got to be rocking because you got to make sure everything is uh, in place and where it needs to be. And you're not allowed to get bored as a leader. I don't think you're allowed to get bored. You can be bored. It could be a reality, but it can't show in your performance. You can't be bored in your family as, you know what I'm saying, the, the lover, or the husband, or you know what I'm saying, or the, or the father, whatever. You can't be bored of your job. You got to actually consistently produce even when you don't feel like it. And, I, and I'm wanting to talk about with you guys today, how are we tackling that 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 mundane phase? Uh, some call it the in-between fights. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you always... Coach B used to always tell us, Jarrell, either you going through a storm or you just came out of one. And uh, when you in that middle ground, how are you guys keeping that 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 rigor? You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I guess I, I kind of add to this first. I when I get to that point, I try I try to create pressure for myself. 
Um, I try to I try to make up pressure for myself. I got it from LeBron. LeBron said he make up uh, enemies in the NBA to be able to keep himself, you know, wanting to be the best basketball player. Uh, yeah, right. That he, that's that's what he said. And and I don't he, know. he say a lot of stuff that ain't true. I saw the, the little. I saw a lot of cap. <laughs> Like, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's Captain LeBron's rap. But I do okay. think I do think that LeBron is is a very intellectual person, though. Even though oh, I think he really one of my yeah, favorite humans on this earth. Yeah, one of my favorite basketball player. But that's okay. Yeah, Go ahead. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but nah, uh, no. Nah, I mean, how how are y'all kind of about that? Because I know like creating fear or creating like curiosity, and I let uh, Mr. Lithium go on that a little bit because he talked about a little bit on that, but. Uh, that kind of helps you. It's like free focus, like creating a little fear in yourself, like gets you a little more alert. It's like, like creating that, that just that, oh snap, something might actually not work out in this. So let me go ahead and go a little harder right now, even though there's nothing really going right now. It's like a yeah, Wednesday. Wrong. Make yeah. a storm when it's not a storm. Yeah, at, at least. A, a little, not a storm storm, like, you know, a couple of raindrops. Keep yourself Drop in that. training. Keep yourself in that training. You got to keep yourself ready, like the army. Like the army always got their soldiers getting up at 5 a.m. going out and running because they know at some point when we go to war, that's what you're going to do. You're going to get up at 5 and you're going to put that rucksack on and you're going to have to go to war and protect this country. So even though, you know, we may not be in war, they still prepare for war constantly. So what, what are you guys doing to be able to, you know, get through those mundane moments of life? To use your analogy, I, I, I want to offend nobody, but uh, I mean, we, they, don't be don't be sensitive. That's what that means. Uh, I don't think everybody is 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 either built for that role or successful in that role. Because the people who go into war, your captains, your generals, and your soldiers, you got some people that stay behind everybody just want to stay safe. Uh, so for the people that that all of those warriors, or, or, or for the people who say they are warriors, there are a lot of people that, that talk a good game, but you gotta, like I said, you gotta keep yourself ready, you gotta keep yourself sharp, you gotta be able to move even in, in the mud and the quicksand. You gotta always be thinking ahead, thinking of a possibility. That's me, I think that's what you were alluding to when you were saying to me, like, when everything is going good or everything is boring or mundane or whatever, it's, it's, there's always something. There's always something you can learn, something you can, when we started talking on the podcast, I'm looking at an old video about uh, investment banking and stuff. Like it's always something. You are not the greatest at, uh, you are not the greatest at anything because it's always somebody that has more knowledge or is a little bit better. I know there's a saying out there that I hear from C.T. Fletcher all the time. It says, uh, <laughs> There's always somebody that's better than you. And he was like, no, nah, somebody got to be the baddest. Nobody knows who that person is. So you always got to keep yourself ready for that, for that spot. And, and not even in a, in, a, in a negative sense. Like you always, whether it's working out, it's discipline. Discipline and consistency can get you almost anything in life. But they have to go together. You have to be disciplined enough to understand, hey, I need to work on this or get better at this or keep doing this. And you got to be consistent to achieve that goal. And when you achieve that goal, you got to have a discipline and say, okay, what's the next thing I'm going to go after? I agree. <laughs> on, on the contrary, I agree. And on the contrary, the only thing, the only greatest you can be is you. You could be the greatest you you could be. You know what I'm saying? So y'all got to stop. So when you compare yourself in that way, I think that's important to know. It's like, it is like, dang, like I still got a long way to go. But it's like your combination, once you get – to maybe almost where that that greatest person is, look at the rest of your body of work and see how that plays a role into bringing up the rest of who you are once you kind of get that on that mindset on. So I, I like that you said that. Definitely, bro. I would say using, you know, whatever we want to call it, your, your quiet time, your peaceful times as a, a opportunity to kind of evaluate and project forward, man. Honestly, we're talking about staying ahead of your game, being prepared for stuff. You never really know what it'll be that's going to come up, but something is going to come up. So I think it's always important to really take time to kind of evaluate what's going on in your world. Like, really the boring, like, day-to-day -day stuff. Like, if you own a home, if you do whatever, like, kind of check your place out. Like, see what's really going on. Know what kind of things you can improve on so that they don't become something that pops up on you and is really bad down the road. So I think that just goes with being prepared, like what you were saying. So mm -hmm. 
I, uh, I always tell my team that I work with, because um, they always try to compare us to other teams. And the thing with me is I ain't worried about them. So even with myself, I know a lot of people would be like, oh, you're doing great or you're doing pretty good or whatever it is. And I'm like, I don't want to compare myself to the rest of the world. I just had a conversation with my sister about how lazy I am and how I can do way better. So um, it's just like, I think a lot of people, when they get to that comfortable spot, it's almost like, I'm good. But like y'all saying, you never know when that storm comes. You never know when that tire going to blow, when that engine going to blow, you know? So I, you care, you know me, I put money to the side for the rainy days, but I also try to compete with my ambition. I don't try to compete with nobody else. It's almost, I'm trying, I'm trying to compete with myself. Like I want to be better. I want to do better. Um, every day I wake up and go to work, you know, like I say, my team, we supposed to leave the office at 9.30, but other teams might be there till 9.45, and they're like, oh, we ain't leaving because, nah, bro, we better. I hope they don't watch. We better than them teams. We don't nah, want to do. Say that, though. Pop your ish, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Pop your yeah. ish, bro. Yeah, so, like, we the best, so I'm not worried about what they're doing because we about to go out here and serve the clients we serve at 9.30, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we're getting out there, we're getting our job done. It didn't look, at the end of the week, we kill it all week. By Friday, maybe you leave 30 minutes early because you killed it all week instead of staying 15 minutes late every day. So I just try to make sure, well, try, because some days I am really, I call myself lazy. Um, I try to compete with the things I say, the things everybody say. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to do this. I'm going to read 10 books. I try to remember that stuff, and I get pissed off at myself if I don't do yeah. pretty good. I ain't going to say I'm perfect, but I try to do good. There you go. I, I feel like what you just said makes me think about um because I, I do a lot better now, uh Jay Jones, since like back then when you try to start telling me about like saving and stuff like that. Like I got my acorns account. So we didn't told y'all about acorn before. Acorn saving my money. Like I got it growing. I got like I think I got like a thousand dollars in there now. I don't need to think about it, it just rounds up. So it's just hey, they investing it for me. I got a, I got I just got a, a life insurance policy. Shout out to uh, Aaron M- Maputo, but he, I'm plugging him real quick. We're gonna have him on the podcast too. But uh, he plugged me in on life insurance, and the reason why I'm saying these things is because I think as a leader, you have to understand Murphy's law, which says that what can go wrong will go wrong. I mean, it's just like it's inevitable that things that can go wrong probably at some point down the road will. I mean, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen more often than not, because if you do what you're supposed to do and you prepare yourself, then it, sh- it shouldn't happen too many times. But everything's possible. You know what I'm saying? We live in a, in a law of uh, polarity uh, universe. You know what I'm saying? It's, everything is on both sides at all times. And all, you one degree of separation away from being at the top of the hill, the bottom. You feel me? So, like, that's what people really, um, really got to hold on to. And I think that's what helps me out with not being bored because it's like I, I got some kids man like at the school in the club I uh I run our sponsor um it's called the interact club the community outreach club these kids are some of the most intelligent individuals man I've ever been around in my life bro like just off of just straight IQ but what amazes me the most about some of those kids is the fact that they're like they're so competitive that they always feel like somebody's coming for them like they they attack homework assignments like Hey, somebody's always coming. Like I hear them say stuff like that when they talk about their grades and about, you know, just about creating a, a better situation for them academically in the, in the classroom. They just be like, hey, like it's doggy dog out here. And I was like, dang, I ain't never heard of nobody talk about schoolwork like that because I, I mean, in school, I was not on that <laughs> way. But these kids, that's why they're like that. Like these is top, you know what I'm saying, top of their class kids, valedictorian, salutatorians. It's like, hey, they see it like, I gotta be on it because there's, some type of immense pain linked to not, you know, completing the task, which is becoming the best I could be at this time. So I think that's something that helps with, you know, getting out of that boredom because boredom says you content, like Jarrell said, you, you, you comfortable. You never want to be comfortable. I feel like that's a very scary place to be is when you, you just can say, Oh, I feel good. And I know that somebody is going to argue me that on that because there's people that like, you know, the Zen masters that want to be at peace at all times and they want to be all, you know, um, always balanced. But you can't always be balanced and be a dog. Like, it don't work like that. Like, you can't you can't be out here just killing it and just be balanced like this. You know, well, that's what that's what I said. That's the, that's the balance of life, the balance of, of Earth. Every, I'm going to be honest with you. Every, everybody don't have that in them. 
Some Everybody people, don't. Some people want to be those, those Zen masters or just want to just chill and, and wait for you to, to do it and show them how to do it or, or show me how to get there. But everybody ain't trying to go on the path that has, has less travel. They rather go on the path that they know where it's going. So it, it's, it's not it's not for everybody. I mean, if everybody was leader, nobody would be following no way. But and that's that's what I was gonna say too. The time and the place for everything, and and there is roles. You have different roles in different areas of your life. Because sometimes you're not really even if you are a dog, you have to be balanced because it's not the time. It's not your time. Like you gotta sit back and wait and learn something. So you gotta stay low. You learn. You listen. And then when it's time for you to be in the forefront, then you attack. But I feel mm-hmm. like that's what um. Yeah, that balance we're talking about, like, that's where it comes into play. But, shoot, when it's your time to go, you can't be waiting, like, and talking about, well, it ain't time because it's, I just don't feel it yet. Like, I just don't. Like, nah, it's, now now we now we not eating, daddy, because you ain't feel it. Like, you ain't feel like going to work, huh? So, we, now we got to, now you ain't got no job. Now we got to just chill here. We ain't no unemployment. Like, come on, bro. You a L. You a L. You daddies that don't want to go. Man, come on, bro. Like, don't, don't, don't tell me that, bro. Don't, don't. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not. And and you can fix it. It could be fixed. But you gotta be real with yourself and say where you at. And I think that's the hardest part for a lot of people. Like you, you don't want to be honest and 100 real with where you are right now, like currently, because that's where it starts. Because that's how you get bored. You be like, oh, I'm good, but it's a perceived peace. It's just like you created in your mind. Like you just, and I mean. May not be real, bro. That's what I'm saying. Um, but uh, with that, I the idea we're talking about, man. Um, how y'all battling anxiety though? You know, because when you talk about anxiety, you talking about um holiday season. We had brought. Up, I don't know who want to introduce what we talked about with Christmas. What's y'all thoughts on Christmas and the creation of anxiety around that holiday, and then going into you know. All these other commercial holidays we got, because it does create anxiety, because people burn the holes in them pockets, spending money they ain't got, you know what I'm saying, working for these jobs, pulling overtime to make these babies happy for two days. Yeah, I'll let, <laughs> I'll let, y'all, I'll let y'all elaborate on this, because I think I kind of brought this one up, but I just got to reading about uh, heart disease is like the number one reason that uh, people die mm. we have. We have men, uh, especially men. Yeah, we have a we have uh, acute disease and chronic disease. Acute disease is something short term. You can learn how to get over it. You get out of it. It, it causes stress, acute stress, and chronic stress. Uh, short term stress, you, you you feel that tension. Your body temperatures change, all that, but you you get away from it. And then you learn from it, whatever. Where you got chronic stresses that turn into diseases and things of that nature because it's repetitive and it keeps coming. You don't know how to get out of it. Well, to put that together with the, the Christmas, especially the Christmas season, we hear a lot of families, a lot of parents, a lot of single parents, grandparents, uncles, and whatever. Like they get so stressed out uh, when. Christmas comes around to where it went from an acute stress to a chronic stress because they have anxiety when, when the Christmas season comes around because they're like, I don't like Christmas because it puts all this pressure on them. They can't fulfill the pressure. And I think Christmas lost its lust in, in the whole sense. And then Nate was tying that to uh, the commercial business behind Christmas. <laughs> it's, it's chronic for them too, but in a different way. It's, it's a, a chronic uh, payment it's a chronic uh not payment but it's, it's a chronic profit uh, yeah for the people that that drive the commercial success of, of especially christmas every year it's like either a day a week a couple of days it moves up from advertising it used to be just you know after thanksgiving the day after thanksgiving you know christmas story now it's a couple of days before thanksgiving now Christmas uh, decorations are going up the same time Halloween decorations are going up. Right. Next thing you know, we're going to be getting Christmas decorations when school starts. It's just like they're going to keep trying to push it and pull every penny out of it. And I think that's when Nate was saying there's a there's a commercial success behind that idea. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the just the pressure that it puts on people as well as what you were saying. I mean, that comes from the marketing side of things, too. If everything is about 
oh, it's Christmas time. You got to get your kids this gift. Get You know, this is the perfect present for whoever and all of that stuff. That's what we're conditioned to believe. It's our conditioning, right? So, you know, I ain't knocking you getting your kids nothing for Christmas. That's all good and well. But, like, teach them different things is kind of what I would, would say. I think that takes some of that pressure off of you because the pressure is really about how are you going to perform on the, the bank account side of things? Are you finna make Christmas nice or are we broke for Christmas? You know, so if you, one, maybe kids aren't ready to always hear that and be able to really understand it. But at some point, you got to be real with your kids. If life is hard, you got to be honest about that because you can't put, I think it's better to be honest about life being hard with your kids than it is to give them false expectations that put more pressure on you that y'all can't live up to, All right? I see you shaking your head on that one, Gary. Why? No, nah, I'm saying at every point you got to be real with your kids. At yeah. every point you got to be real. You got to always be real with your kids and let them know. Because I think okay. I remember that when I was younger, my mom used to tell us straight up, like, hey, y'all not getting that game. That game you think you're getting, you're not getting that one this year. And I and I was like, all right, I ain't getting that game. I was like, all right, cool. Like, she yeah. ain't string me along or nothing. And, and, I, and I wasn't hurt about it. I, I, like, I just remember that conversation. So I, mean, I think I the big thing about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, got oh, no, I was about to say the biggest thing is like a lot of people don't know how to set boundaries with friends, yeah. family, kids, anybody. It's almost like you gotta learn. It's almost like you gotta have that confidence, like y'all saying, to say, I ain't got it right now. I mean, I have a lot of friends from Nate, you know, a couple no, they might hey, can I borrow this? Bro, I ain't I'm I'm sorry, I ain't got it right now. You know what I'm saying? You gotta learn how to say that. You know, I got a family to feed, I got you know, I got stuff I'm doing too. I like to you know, I give you all my throwaway money. I can't travel and, and pour back into my cup. So I think you got to learn how to set boundaries with family, friends, kids. And, I mean, people look at selfish as a bad word, but I used to always tell DeMarcus, I know, I know me. I'm a little bit, like, I'm not about to, I got a little bit of selfish. I'm not, I can't just be like, uh, I give you everything. I ain't got nothing, you know. So just be real. Set boundaries and be real, man. Keep it 100. Yeah. Sure. It's, it's, I'm it's, pretty it's, pretty 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 so. It's hard for people to accept that. Me having older kids and it's hard for people to accept that because on one end you're pseudo taught that your kids are supposed to have life better than you and supposed to be able to afford better for your kids. And the gap between being a parent and being a friend. Uh, my my parents never cared about being a friend. Nowadays, you know, from the baby boomers, uh, the late 2000s or whatever, everybody kind of wants to be a friend. So you want to see your kids happy. And happiness is temporary. Happiness is, is, is not elongated. It's all temporary. I, I've i seen, I, I, we all did toy drives. So me, Carrie, and Gerald did the same toy drive. I, we literally had some kids that didn't have no toys. Give them a toy. And they're like, I don't want that. Like, okay, well, okay. There's nothing else we can give you. All right. <laughs> all right. They just can't be choosers, man. Yeah, all right. But uh, I, I think the being real with your kids is, is really hard for a lot of parents. And then they deal with the stress of the financial stress that, that all these companies profit off of because they get to build off of that, off of that anxiety of parents, friends, family that want to do everything for their loved ones and especially the children and Oof. they don't care. I mean, they're not going to see you anyway. So. The thing we can do better is if if you want to have a great Christmas, hey, plan for it all year. You got a whole year to save for, you know, if that's what you want to do. You got a whole year to put $10 away every week. You got a whole year to put whatever you want to put away every week. And if you want your kids to have a great Christmas, Make sure you 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 set that boundary with yourself. Maybe that 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 crying of coke every Saturday ain't you know, what you need. Maybe that going to the bar every week or the club every week ain't what you need. Cause I know every time I go out, I spend, it's like when you leave the house, you are gonna spend a hundred dollars. So sometimes that, <laughs> that, that sandwich and chips gonna be good for you if you want that you know remote control car on Christmas. You know what I'm saying? So set that boundary in January. That make that one of your goals. If you want your kids to have that great Christmas, if you know they want this nice gift, this one nice gift, set that boundary. Make, make sure you make it happen for them if you can. 
So, but you know what they mean, though? That means it's something you actually care about and not something that just pop up on your mind when it's that time of the year. That means it's something that you actually want to do because you care about your kids. But yeah, you, you got to be a free. You got to be a free thinker to know you actually want to do that, though. And we are not groomed to be mm-hmm. free thinkers as adults. So I think you got a lot of people that are adults that when certain holidays show up, they feel like it's time to be nice. And they're like, oh, everybody's being nice. There's cheer being marketed on TV and there's happiness and love and cage commercials and, you know what I'm saying, fireworks and grills on 4th of July. It's like, bro, like, it's like the nice thing. It's like wanting to be liked, wanting to be a part. You know, it's always want to be in it. But the thing is, is like, if it doesn't work for you financially, one, be real with yourself, right? Because at the end of the day, your finances is your power here. So if you ain't got no finances, you ain't got no power. You lose all your power and, and give all your power to Christmas. How, how dumb of a fool you got to be? If you gave all your power to Christmas, I want you to just look at yourself today in the mirror and say, dang, man. <laughs> I want you to say, what am I really doing out here? Like, what am I really trying to do? I gave all my financial strength away to basically have some Christmas cheer, quote unquote. And now I created a poor year for 2023. Good job. There you go. Yeah. Good job. That in March, and in March, them kids ain't gonna be playing with them toys. Man, <laughs> them toys gonna like, be in the back. The symbol, they ain't gonna be playing with them. <laughs> you tripping uh, over them in the hallway. You, I can't get this old toy off the ground. Get them off the ground. Drop these toys. Two, two things. Y'all can, y'all can push rewind or whatever you want to do. There's two things Kerry just said I don't want you to miss. He said, mark it. He said, that's what's being marketed to you. Understand, people market to you so they can make a profit. Understand the ideology behind this. They're marketing these ideas of peace, joy, give, give, give. You know, even if you don't have it, give it, and it'll come back to you, whatever. It's marketed so that you can spend the money and they can profit off of it. And another thing that he didn't say directly, but it's subliminally, is you got to be disciplined to not spin emotional spin i know gerald talked about this a long time ago in one of our podcasts where he was talking about emotional spending is the death of any budget any budget that you put together when you start doing emotional spending that's the death of your whole budget so if you're going to budget and have a budget for christmas that causes discipline to come into effect if you're consistent with the discipline then you get to a point to where everybody will have a great christmas nobody will have to deal with the anxiety but you can't not, you can you have to separate yourself from being emotional. Cause they they work they work the market off of the emotional side because a lot of us aren't disciplined enough to say no or do it this way or have a budget. So where you overspend because of the emotion, emotion has no end <laughs> until you run out of emotion and then you out of money at the same time. Now you're going through a whole different emotion, depression, sadness, and all the other stuff. You might even like like Carrie said, you might even be mad at your kid because you didn't bought a toy that they don't even play with and you didn't broke your pinky toe on it. <laughs> That's 100, man. I just I don't know. I and mean, me, Carrie, we go back, you know what I'm saying? I used to and always talk about yes. going to the club and not, when we was young, we was in college, you know. And hey, when I was at my budget, Carrie knew, man. I was like, yo, <laughs> I ain't got even I might have five thousand dollars i ain't got it. i ain't got twenty dollars when i pass my budget bro like i can't do it because i'm planning on future things i don't even know what those future like whatever it is you never know i just I always just like nah man my budget is my budget and if you don't like me because i ain't gonna give you my 20 40 dollars because i don't have it you might know i have it and i tell you i don't have it i'm sorry man that's tough like, and I think that even goes into like, you know, you saying your budget, but you also an investor. You know what I'm saying? You you yeah. don't, it's not like you don't spend money. Like Jarrell yeah. spends money. He spends money on his investments. And I think when you transition and see your money is valuable to you, then you start to put it into things that can actually grow in value. These toys are not growing in value. They literally, as soon as you buy them to your kids, they are less valuable after they have them. So you got to be strategic in how you do Christmas how you do any gift giving or any type of, you know, means to an end, you know, spending. Like, I just feel like when you spend money, it's a transfer of energy. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you want that to be. When we bought those toys for that toy drive, that was a that was a transfer of energy. In my mind, I'm thinking these kids are going to have a better Christmas because they had an opportunity to have a toy that may not have had one or something like that. Mm-hmm. I love that experience. I love that. 
that's a transfer of my energy to them. Like, but it's not, that's it. That's it. Like, there's nothing more to it. Let's move on. I wouldn't have spent all my money to do that. That's foolish. Now it's called altruism. Altruism is a mental disorder, bro. Like, you can't just be doing and doing for people and not thinking about yourself. Like, you got to do what you can do. Give what you can give. You know what I'm saying? And I, now I really want to say this real quick before anybody else asks to this. Just stop being so nice, y'all. Stop trying to be nice all the time. I really want to say that being nice is my <laughs> being nice is not um it's not a good thing. I think you should, I think being kind, I think being kind and doing things that are positive is, is great. And I think you should do that, but do not want to be defined as nice because nice people get taken advantage of. Like y'all, y'all done heard it. Nice guys finish last. Like if you define yourself as nice and you want to label yourself as nice out in this world, then people are going to see that and they're going to see you as prey and they're going to profit off of you over and over and over and over and over and over again because you are paying. You are literally walking pain for yourself. Like you are willing to put yourself in a painful situation to make somebody else feel better about themselves. And that makes you a walking ill. That's why I just said selfish ain't a bad word. Yeah. Boundaries ain't a bad word. Like you really gotta have that in life. You gotta say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I'm good. Like <laughs> y'all go ahead. Y'all got it. I'm good. I'm straight. Thanks. Make that your New Year's resolution. Be mean 2023. <laughs> Let's get shirts made. Hey man. Oh, you know what? Be mean and kind. Wait, that is- <laughs> be be truthful. Just be yeah. you. Be real. You know what I'm saying? Be real. Like if you being real, you may not want to say good morning to that person that you really don't rock with like that. So hey, bro, you really don't have to. Just kind of just make sure you don't cross paths with that person. Maybe you what? can give everybody else that Somebody energy. Somebody just scare y'all. No, I'm just I'm no, 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 no. I worked with Carrie. Carrie is is a social. Carrie, I was the one not saying. You feel me? Carrie was the one, good morning, good morning. I'll be in the office. He's like, you ain't going to go speak? I was like, no. And, 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 that's why, and that's why I know. That's why I know. They didn't took my energy from me, bro. They didn't took, because they take advantage of you when you go out of your way to make people feel comfortable. When you go out of your way to make your kids always happy. When you go out of your way to make the people at your job happy. Like, bro, when you do that, it's draining because it's not always what you want to do. And, when, and, it's, and it's like, Okay, you do it because it's it's the it's the right thing to do, right? The right thing to do, but it's not truthful all the time because sometimes you just ain't you ain't you ain't feeling it. So hey, I ain't got it, I ain't feeling it, it's not there. You don't rock with me because of that, then you never rock with me in the first place. Because I did it, not gonna make you rock with me more. To be honest, I learned that people that's really you know a-holes, people rock with them tougher. They do, they do, yes. Because you know who you're dealing with. You know who you're getting. Because it's pure. So so be you. So I'm saying, don't try to be liked all the time, y'all. It's not, it's not, it's not the move, y'all. It's not the move. It's not the move. Just want to get That's y'all thought we was a podcast about positivity. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey man, look, we we got be we got be prosperous like your shirt says, bro. You got to be prosperous but too. But that ain't bro. that ain't being negative. That's if my cup empty, man. I ain't got nothing to give. That's mm-hmm. almost like because Carrie, we ain't gonna say no name, but there's a lot of people that Carrie went spoke to and was nice to that was talking, you know what I'm saying, talking behind his back. Yeah. So he would even know it, and he is still gonna speak to him, and they still talk, you know what I'm saying? They still like, oh, he young and he he can do what he wanted, and I'm like, bro, they telling me, you know, they only they know we cool, and, they, <laughs> and he right. was a nice, but I'm the one not speaking, and they coming in my office and speaking to me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like y'all yeah. just said, it's almost like the one that I want to see why he's so quiet. I don't really, I don't get out my, I don't really mess with you like that. Get out, get away. You know, so <laughs> yeah, it, it can it can go it can go either way, man. So give energy to the right healthy relationships, healthy relationships, healthy relationships. Energy is a bank account. It's a bank account. It's a, it, once you once you 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 get energy to those that are gonna help you multiply what you got. That's why I say if they're not helping you multiply and they're taking it from you, then you are right. If you say I'm cutting this off from you and I'm going to give it to somebody else that I know I can grow with. I'd rather have a circle of five that have 500 around me that's cheering me on and they really don't rock with me like that and they waiting to push me down the hill. Like, bro, I'm good. Sometimes less is more. Yeah. 
Well, all, almost all the time. Well, unless you made in these Oprah shows. Unless you would. Thank you, Demarcus, because I was unless about you, to say. You said an Oprah. Come oh, out. Nate with Oprah. This is 25 million. Nate was ready to steal his old, his old life. Not Oprah. Not Miss Winfrey. Miss Winfrey. <laughs> but, Winfrey. You know, but you know, I was. Never mind. Yeah, next up, y'all, y'all, yeah, y'all, yeah, y'all, yeah. y'all, been, y'all been on the cancel, y'all trying to get on Twitter. Y'all, nah, nah, man, <laughs> you know, <laughs> nah, uh, I mean, I did, I did want to kind of, I guess we covered everything being universal, um, we covered things being, you know, mundane, we covered a little bit of anxiety, um, I, I just wanted everybody to know, you know, going into this new year we got coming up, we ain't going to dig into that too much. But, you know, just be just be realistic about, you know, who you're going to be next year um, and, and who you've been. Um, so yeah. You're talking about unlocking a life. Who who are you right now? Like, really, this is the perfect time to do an audit on, you know, December 27th of the type of person, type of father, type of mother, type of daughter, you know, boyfriend, whatever you want to see yourself as, uncle. Just do an audit. And keep it a band though, keep it a bug, make a plan and, and, and try to try to get better. Cause if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. So yeah, and don't be on my treadmill at the gym, man. Y'all, if y'all ain't coming to stay, don't come. And stay away. Mm-hmm. I need my I need my space at the gym. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm just not real just, talk. Y'all start just just try to stay with it. You know what I'm saying? Get, keep that goal in your head. 10 pounds, 20 pounds, whatever it is, man. Y'all can do it. I'm gonna be positive. I ain't gonna be negative. There's a little too much negativity going on. We keeping it real out here, man. <laughs> we keeping it real, these what, folks. I don't think people realize. I saw. I saw this. I forgot who was telling me this, but I also saw it on. I guess on Instagram because I don't. I ain't on nothing else. But take a 25 pound weight and just carry it around for as long as you can. Like, they said carry it around for a day or whatever. Just think that's that's how much weight is on you that you need to get rid of. Hey, I'm I'm a victim of it too. I used to be almost 300 pounds. So that's that's a lot of weight. If you plan on losing weight, just understand, just take a 25 pound weight around and just understand that 25 pounds is a lot of weight. It's 75% of that is poop. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because all of y'all are full of crap. Yeah, poop. Yeah, I need to take a detox. Not nah, for real. I'll just aside. We, we all should have a detox. Yeah, yeah, right I'm on right now. I'm really, I almost ran to the restroom in the middle of the podcast. You want a detox right now? You detox? I want one. I took one this morning. That boy glowing over there. That's why that boy looking light skin over there. <laughs> boy, <I got> the... <laughs> that boy light skin over there. Boy, no detox. That boy been getting it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been getting out. It was that Christmas detox because that Christmas went a little left. A little pie, a little cake. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Nate, what's good? I just want y'all to do better, man. <laughs> do better every day. Yeah, Brave he does. Guy. He really does. He has high hopes for the world. Not Nate, really. Not really. Don't. He he, he, don't <laughs> he don't have high I'm hopes. Just just one job, one but see, what Nate is though, Nate is a thinker though. See, and, and he can't understand what people don't think. And I think that's starting to rub off on me. Yeah, me too. It's, I mean, it's, it's starting to be like, like nah, 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 but it's not even happening. being judgmental sometimes. Sometimes you just really gotta like, you know, when you say it out loud, it helps other people think too. It'd be like, man, you know what, well, you're kind of right. I may not be thinking. It's like, yeah, you're not. You're not thinking. You're not. You should start thinking. Please. Please. Because we need it. Cause you're not thinking this. The world gonna call, this. You eventually the gonna world cost is. me. You eventually gonna cost me at some point. All the people yeah. in this world that don't think about what they do are eventually going to cost each one of us on the podcast at some point. Mm-hmm. That's true. Sit, That's sit what by, creates. Sit by it. Nate in the crowd full of people. You say what? <laughs> sit by Nate in the crowd full of people. Oh no, <laughs> I'm trying to be better, man. <laughs> I'm trying to be better. Hey man, but I want better for the people. I think he does have high hopes for people. I do. He does. One percent better each day. That's it. That's it. And, and, and we that's what we're trying to do, man. So y'all show love on the podcast, man. Like and subscribe. Um, giving y'all great energy, being a light week after week. 
Somebody yeah. showed us to Oprah. Show it to Oprah. Oh, Nate, Lord, no. Nate, 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 they go, they go be on the couch and night, boys. They're on the couch. Oprah, huh? Oprah. All right. All right. Yeah. They, they go be on the couch and night, boy. That, that back will be hurt. Carry on. Like, well, you own that couch. <laughs> right. I heard own. Yep. Oh, I got own something that. for you. Yeah, yeah. You got that. Nah, real talk, though. But hey, man, we out. You eat National Country? Yeah. That's good. Nah, that's, I, are you still recording? <laughs>